The GB News presenter Benjamin Butterworth has once again done something embarrassing and irrational. For those of you who are familiar with uh, Benjamin Butterworth, uh, he's a uh, liberal lefty, well, as we would call him, the globalist, liberal, metropolitan elite, globalist people. And uh, he, he's also a journalist and he lives in London. And again, these people are in Durham bubble. And they don't really want to be associated with certain people in the country because, oh, small to conservatism, you, you're you just in the nationalism is so bad and evil. We just have to always promote globalism and internationalism. The problem we have is that uh, they, too much globalism or internationalism as an ideology, it imports problems from other countries. Uh, for example, what happened with BLM, the BLM movement, bringing an American problem that was very specific to the states, bringing it here, turning it into a British problem, they actually created more division here after years and decades of progress when it came to racial battles in this country and in the West in general. So what happened was we had uh, last night Benjamin Butterworth on GB News on his show, uh, the Saturday Five thing that they have, uh, he decided to um, do a bit of a stunt and take the knee in 2023 in London. I think, you should, I think anybody who cares about racism should take the knee, and, and I'll take the oh, knee no. now. Oh, I, I, I think this isn't oh, posturing. God. This is about supporting <laughs> anti-racism. Good God. And Albie is right. You've been For those sucked. listening at home, Benjamin Butterworth just took the knee. In the middle of the studio. And proud of it. Well, oh, dear. In the words of Keir Starmer... Get up, go home. Um, I'm opposed to what you're doing. Yes, Benjamin, get up and go home. <laughs> I do love that clip from uh, Keir Starmer, but uh, it, it could be used for any meme, really. So the problem we have is that, uh, first things first, there are a couple of issues around this, because <laughs> I don't know if you remember, Gareth Milner actually uh, post posted this tweet last night saying, I'm old enough to remember the last person to take the knee on GB News was suspended. And that was, in fact, Gito Harry, <laughs> the early days of GB News, when he took the knee, and there was a backlash, and he had to uh, essentially quit from GB News as a presenter. He left the whole uh, outlet and uh, somehow they're taking the knee thing is back. It's normalized. Everything's fine now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. So the problem we have is that not only importing American problems is idiotic, but if this whole debate even in America has already, already been exposed. The BLM organization and the BLM movement has been exposed as a massive fraud. It had nothing to do with actual equality. They took advantage of a lot of people and their money and corporations to sponsor them. You had Sky News going woke. You have every, every Sky Sports going woke. You had Disney going woke and everybody else. And now, somehow, most of this has gone to an extent in terms of the publicity stunts. But somehow, some of it is still there, like a little bit of a virus. Every single match we've seen this weekend, Premier League, teams, are still taking the knee. It's a little bit embarrassing for England to do it, mostly because uh, when we were in international tournaments recently, whether it was the World Cup a few months ago, uh, or the Euros or before that, it was the only team that was doing it. I remember watching games saying, <laughs> it was like England playing versus like um, the, the US team or African teams. And it, it black players were standing, and then you had white English players taking the knee, and even the Americans were confused, saying, wait, let me check my calendar, is it 2020 again? <laughs> it's just so outdated, it makes no sense. If you want to fight racial issues and everything else that happens, or just basic injustice, you can do it in a normal way. You can do it by improving civilization, the culture, education system, and prosperity. That's what we've done in the West, to an extent, in the 20th century. That's how we became more... Um, essentially, as, they, as the liberals people, the liberal people would say, tolerant and accepting, right? But now they're bringing it back. They're bringing back division because that's exactly what the, the ideologues who actually said this in the 60s and 70s onwards, they said it. It's in, it literally, there are videos, there are books that they've written, all these ideologues, the academics, philosophers of the left, they said, well, we are going to be basically bringing down the system slowly. We're going to infiltrate every aspect of society, from the media, entertainment, cultural institutions, the political establishment, everything, education system, academia. And then, once everything's brought down, then we could start from scratch, we could rebuild everything, and our utopia could be there. Everything will be great. Great reset, why not? But we knew this was happening. 
But somehow, we buried our head in the sand, and you have useful idiots like Benjamin Butterworth who are taking the knee. You're actually promoting that virus that's been spread. Because if they say, if, if, if you say to them, they're like, that means you, you're, you're a racist. That means you don't like people with the dark skin color. No, we're just attacking your ideology because it's stupid. That's the problem. And you are fueling a lot of chaos from the, the, the most disgusting people on the far left. Ironically, the same people like Benjamin Butterworth would say similar things. When I make a video, a controversial joke uh, about migration, for example, it says, well, I know, they would say, well, I know you're not, you don't mean to be aggressively a fascist, but what you're saying is you are going to be essentially uh, attracting a lot of people who are fascist. Hmm. But you guys are doing the exact same thing. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what we're doing, but that whole argument is completely stupid anyway. Because you don't create people, uh, you don't create fascist people. You don't, it's not like, it's like the same argument that Remainers had after the e-referendum. They implied that people woke up on the 24th of June, 2016, suddenly feeling, oh, I feel a bit racist today. Hmm. <laughs> That's not how it works. You can't do that. But we are where we are now. And these people, they're going to continue with the ideological battles for no reason. And they're going to blame the political right for continuing the culture wars. Even those them who keep doing it, the far left and far right, they keep pushing each other. And again, those phrases are completely outdated now, far left, far right. But there are certain people, the bad actors from various sides, and a lot of them are basically just completely distracting the debate. They keep poking each other and sensible people in the middle, like, just both, just shut up. It, 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 it is not really the place, not in Britannia, not in 2023. The BLM has been exposed. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.